The warriors were compassionate, compassionate men, young men, and they were very spiritual. And I want my grandma, my grandma said to me, she said, it takes a warrior to cry because then the people know that you have compassion for them. And when you have compassion for the people, you're willing to sacrifice anything for the people. And today, society, it changed for us. So today, in order for us to complete that rite of passage, we joined the military today. And that's how we complete our rite of passage as a warrior. And we fulfill it in our lives because it's in our blood. It's passed down from generation to generation. And it's not always, it's not always about warring. It's always about being a role model. It's about serving. It's about being a compassionate person for the people and the generations yet to come and being good teachers and leaders. Hello, and welcome to this second webcast in our series entitled Department of Veterans Affairs, working with tribal governments to serve veterans in Indian country. I'm your guest host, Kristen Cunningham, Director of Business Policy at the Veterans Health Administration Chief Business Office. That video clip that we just saw really brings into focus why we're all here. These veterans' selfless service and sacrifices for our country ensures all of our freedoms. And we in the VA and Indian Health Service are so honored to support them when they return from battle. These quarterly webcasts are designed to enhance and support government-to-government -government relationships with American Indian and Alaska Native tribal governments education, through education, communication, collaboration, and outreach to veterans and tribal leaders and veteran service providers, as well as internal and external stakeholders. VA and the Indian Health Service are committed to interagency collaboration and partnership that enhances access to health care for all tribal veterans that are eligible to receive VA health benefits and services. Today, we welcome our colleagues from the Veterans Health Administration and the Indian Health Service who are here to discuss healthcare access opportunities for American Indian and Alaska Native veterans. Today's broadcast will focus on two areas, VA enrollment and eligibility requirements and the VA Tribal Health Program reimbursement process. Joining me in the studio today are Cindy Kindred, Deputy Chief Business Officer for Purchase Care for the Veterans Health Administration Chief Business Office, Dr. Susan Carroll, the Indian Health Service Chief Medical Officer, and Carl Harper, Director of the Indian Health Service Office of Resource Access and Partnerships. Welcome to all of you. Today's interactive one-hour webcast will provide you with the opportunity to hear firsthand from these subject matter experts offering up-to-date information on VA enrollment and benefits eligibility, as well as VA and tribal health programs reimbursement. We'd also like to provide you with an email address to send us your questions. And later in the broadcast, we'll do our very best to answer them or provide you with a response at the conclusion of today's program. I'd like to begin our program with Cindy and I discussing VA enrollment and benefits eligibility and then tie in with Dr. Carroll and Carl Harper to address the VA and Tribal Health Programs reimbursement. Cindy, let's begin with the eligibility and enrollment. Can you walk us through the enrollment process, please? Sure, Kristen. Today's veterans have a comprehensive medical benefits package, which VA administers through a patient enrollment system. The enrollment system is based on a priority groups to ensure health care benefits are readily available to all enrolled veterans. Complementing the expansion of benefits and improved access is our ongoing commitment to providing the very best in quality service. Our goal is to ensure our veterans receive the finest quality health care regardless of the treatment program and regardless of the location. Enrollment in the VA health care system provides veterans with an assurance that comprehensive health care services will be available when and where they are needed. Thank you, Cindy. Who would qualify for VA health benefits? 
A person who served in the active military, naval or air service, and was discharged or released from service under other than dishonorable conditions may qualify for VA health care benefits. Active military service means full-time service in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps, Coast Guard, or as a commissioned officer in the Public Health Service. Environmental Science Services Administration or National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration or its predecessor, the Coast and Geodectic Survey. Reservists and National Guard members may also qualify for enrollment in the VA healthcare system if they were called to active duty by federal order or completed the full period for which they were called or ordered to active duty. The exception to this is Guard and Reservists who were called for training only and do not qualify for enrollment. Thanks, Cindy. At this time, I'd like to go over the basic eligibility requirements. Veterans who enlisted after September 7, 1980, or who entered active duty after October 16, 1981, must meet minimum eligibility requirements to qualify for enrollment. Here's a brief overview of those requirements. The character of discharge must be discharged from active military service under other than dishonorable conditions. The time in service must be at least 24 consecutive months. However, National Guard and reservists who were called to service by federal order are only required to have served the full period for which they were called. Veterans must provide some needs-based financial disclosure information for those veterans who are applying for enrollment based solely on their income level. Now, during enrollment, each veteran is assigned to a priority group. VA uses priority groups to balance demand for VA healthcare resources. Changes in available resources may reduce or increase the number of priority groups VA can enroll. When this happens, VA will publicize the changes and notify affected enrollees. An example of a change in the priority group enrollment was the recent relaxation of the requirements for Priority Group 8 veterans, allowing more of them to receive VA medical care. Cindy, can you tell us the difference between the various Priority Group levels, please? Of course. The higher priority groups are generally those veterans who have a service-connected disability rated by the Veterans Benefit Administration. The lower priority groups are those veterans who are not service-connected and are able to enroll based on their income being within the thresholds for enrollment. The non-service-connected veterans must also agree to pay co-payments if required based on their income. Thanks for that, Cindy. I'd like to point out that VA provides a wide range of medical services often referred to as the Medical Benefits Package, which all veterans enrolled in VA health care are eligible to receive. These services include preventative care, inpatient and outpatient care, medications, and extended care services. The care is available at VA medical centers, VA outpatient clinics, community-based outpatient clinics, and VA mobile clinics. Cindy, can you run through some of the services that are included? Sure. Preventive services include flu, flu shots, immunizations, physical examinations, health education, weight loss counseling, smoking cessation, and medical screenings. Outpatient care includes doctor's visits, lab tests, x-rays, diagnostic testing, outpatient surgery, mental health care including substance abuse, and dialysis. Inpatient care includes hospital, medical, surgical, mental health and care including substance abuse. Medications include prescriptions and some over-the-counter medications and durable medical equipment and supplies available through the VA's national formulary system. Emergency medical care at VA facilities and under certain circumstances at facilities outside the VA healthcare system and there are limitations that apply. Thanks Cindy. There are other limited benefits included in the medical benefits package as well. Some of those include ambulance service, eyeglasses and hearing aids, prosthetics, durable medical equipment, and rehabilitation devices. Extended care services also include VA nursing home care services and certain types of home health care. Also dental care has limited availability and benefits. Finally, Care for service-connected conditions in foreign countries are covered through the VA FAR medical program. Veterans can get all the information on the limitations and conditions 
for VA benefits by contacting their local VA medical center. Cindy, how can veterans apply for these benefits? Veterans can apply online, by telephone, by mailing an application, or applying in person at the VA where they want to receive services. To apply online, go to the website as seen on the screen and complete the Form 1010-EZ. To apply by phone, contact VA at 1-877-222-VETS-8387. To apply by mail, complete a VA Form 1010-EZ and mail it to the address on the form. Applying in person at the VA facility where you want to receive services. Great. Great information, Cindy. Thanks so much. Let's move on to reimbursement agreements and turn to our colleagues from the Indian Health Service. To start off, Dr. Carroll, can you give some, our audience some background on the collaborative efforts between the VA and the Indian Health Service? Of course, Kristen. We've been working closely with the VA to help improve access to and coordination of health care for American Indian and Alaska Native veterans and appreciate the opportunity to participate in this webcast. We've worked closely with the federal IHS, tribal, and urban sites to expand our work with the VA. My attendance at the VA Rural Health Advisory Committee has kept us on the forefront of issues with the VA. We look forward to our continued close communication and collaboration moving forward to improve care for our American Indian and Alaska Native veterans. Thank you. Dr. Carroll, can you talk a little bit more about the Memorandum of Understanding that the VA and the Indian Health Service share? Of course. Since 2003, the VA and Indian Health Service have worked together under a Memorandum of Understanding, or an MOU. The focus of the MOU has been to promote quality health care through a collaborative relationship and agreements. The VA and IHS signed a new MOU on October 1, 2010. To increase quality health care and enhance co coordination and collaboration between the two agencies. Thank you. <clears throat> As I understand it, Dr. Petzl and the IHS Director, Dr. Yvette Ribadou, signed an important agreement of national significance. Can you tell us about that, Dr. Carroll? Certainly. On December 5, 2012, the IHS and the VA signed a national reimbursement agreement. Under this agreement, the VA will reimburse IHS to provide direct health care services to eligible American Indian and Alaska Native veterans. This agreement has already been implemented in all IHS federal health facilities. In addition, the VA is working to enter into agreements with tribally managed health programs. The agreements with the IHS and tribal health programs help to implement Section 405 of the Indian Health Care Improvement Act. These agreements also support the implementation of the VA IHS MOU objectives to establish the coordination, collaboration, and resource sharing between the VA and all the tribal health programs. Thank you. Carl, can you talk a little about the integration of resources within the VA and the Indian health systems? Sure, sure, Kristen. This map depicts the location of IHS and tribal health facilities nationally. The map also depicts Veterans Affairs Medical Centers, or VAMCs, if you will, similar to how IHS has areas. The VAMCs are organized in Veteran Integrated Service Networks, or VISNs. There are 23 VISNs which are uh, denoted on this map by the numbers. The integration of our resources will strengthen relationships and provide more comprehensive coverage for targeting veteran populations located in rural areas. Carl, under the reimbursement agreement, we see the term eligible AIAN veteran. Can you tell us what that is and also explain direct care services? Sure. Sure, Kristen. Both the IHS and tribal health programs reimbursement agreements are similar in requirements, goals, and objectives. An eligible Indian American Indian or Alaska Native veteran is a veteran who is eligible and enrolled in the VA systems and also eligible for IHS. Direct care services means any eligible service that is provided directly by tribal health programs at the tribal health programs facility. Direct care services does not include care or services referred or provided outside the tribal health programs facility through a contract or contract health service referrals. Thank you. 
Dr. Carroll, let's review some of the reimbursement agreement benefits, specifically those that focus on the veteran. Sure. The basic principles of the IHS and Tribal Health Program reimbursement agreements allow for eligible American Indian Alaska Native veterans to receive direct care services at their local tribal facility and in turn that facility will be reimbursed per terms of the agreement. Other benefits that focus specifically on the veteran include medical benefits package, the VA will reimburse for direct health care services under the same medical benefits package available to all veterans under 38 CFR 17.38. Choice of an eligible care provider, uh, any eligible American Indian or Alaska Native veteran can choose to receive their health care from the IHS Tribal Health Program facility and or VA facility. No pre-authorization for care at the Indian Health Service or Tribal Health Care Program facility will be required. Pharmacy options. The VA will reimburse for a 30-day supply of outpatient medications to eligible American Indian Alaska Native veterans. After the initial 30-day supply, the VA will only cover prescriptions using the Consolidated Mail Outpatient Pharmacy, or CMOP as we call it, for routine, long-term outpatient medications. No copayment. Pursuant to Section 405 of the Indian Health Care Improvement Act, the VA copayments do not apply to direct care services provided by the IHS or tribal health programs within their health care facilities. No outstanding balances. The IHS and tribal health programs will bill third parties prior to billing the VA. The balance remaining is the responsibility of the VA and not the American Indian Alaska Native veteran. Thank you. <clears throat> Carl, let's talk about payment methodologies set forth by the VA Indian Health Service National Agreement. Well, Kristen, first it's important to note that the approved VA IHS National Agreement sets forth payment methodologies that have not previously been implemented in the VA medical care program system. These methodologies will also be reflected in the Tribal Health Program Reimbursement Agreements. Uh, while inpatient services will use Medicare payment methodologies, uh, outpatient services will be based on the IHS OMB all-inclusive rate. In addition, the Medicare rates will be used for reimbursement at critical access hospitals as well as the ambulatory surgical services. Due to the differences and complexity of processing these claims, there will be a $15 administrative fee for the first two years of the program on all outpatient claims. And this reduction does not apply to inpatient uh, or it does not apply to pharmacy claims. Additionally, a paper claim also incurs a $15 administrative fee. Thank you. Cindy, let's bring you into this discussion. What if a veteran needs a specialty care referral? Well, as we've already mentioned, the reimbursement agreement covers the veteran's medical benefits package when provided directly at the IHS or tribal facility. At times, referral for specialty care is needed. When specialty care is needed and the IHS facility cannot provide care, the veteran or the IHS facility on behalf of the veteran may contact the local VA Medical Center for care coordination. Additionally, the VA will provide durable medical equipment, also known as DME, when it can be coordinated in advance of the need with the VA Medical Center. DME should be requested of and provided by the authorizing VA facilities prosthetics or physical medicine department. IHS or tribal health pro program providers are encouraged to make prior arrangements and coordinate DMA needs for their veteran patients with the referring VA medical center. Thank you, Cindy. What's the implementation process for the tribal health programs agreement? What we're showing is a simplified process for the agreement development. A more detailed process is located in the provider orientation guide posted to the IHS and VA OTGR Office of Tribal Government Relations websites. A link to those sites is provided on the last page of the guide. Using the agreement template, the VA Medical Center and the Tribal Health Programs work together to complete the draft reimbursement agreement. Concurrently, the Tribal Health Programs work closely to satisfy site readiness criteria. Once the draft is complete, it will be reviewed by the Chief Business Office and Regional Council as well as contracting. 
After final signatures, reimbursement for direct care can commence. I would imagine that the most critical step in the process is ensuring we have enrolled AIAN veterans. What kind of training is underway for folks in the programs to, under, to enroll veterans and understand eligibility? That's an excellent point, Kristen. The Health Eligibility Center, also known as HEC, is providing monthly training to IHS and tribal health programs on how to enroll veterans and understand veteran eligibility. Once enrolled, veterans can begin receiving VA benefits. Once the tribal sharing agreement is signed with the VA, then the tribal health care facility can seek reimbursement from the VA. Anyone is welcome to attend this training. Please email us at tribal.agreements at va.gov to receive a calendar invite. And also very important, what's the timeline for implementation? The VA has two different timelines for implementation. Because the tribal health program is managed by a sovereign entity and not under IHS governance, since IHS has one national agreement, they proceeded with implementation for all IHS sites. However, for the tribal health programs, each tribe can proceed with the establishing individual reimbursement agreements following the published template. The reimbursement agreement template is designed to ensure the tribes receive the same benefits as the IHS agreement. To date, a large number of tribes and tribal health programs have entered into reimbursement agreements with the VA. If your tribe is interested in an agreement, please email your letter of intent to the tribal.agreements at va.government mailbox. And let me add that all documentation on how to establish agreements will be housed at the VA Office of Tribal Government Relations website. This website is external to the VA firewall and can be accessed by anyone. For more information on getting started with the Tribal Health Program agreements, send an email to the tribal.agreements at va.gov mail address. We've covered a lot of information today. Now it's your turn to ask your questions. If you haven't already done so, please send your email to tribalgovernmentconsultation at va.gov. While we wait for those emails, I'm going to start off with a few we've actually already received before the broadcast. And then we'll move on to the ones that come in while we're talking. So for the very first question, how do veterans obtain referrals for hearing aids? Cindy or Dr. Carroll, can either one of you answer that question? Well, an American Indian Alaska Native veteran would probably first come to a, one of our facilities and work with their primary care provider to see what's available at that facility. If it's not available there, then we would refer them over to the VA. And, yeah, and when they get to the VA, it's handled like the durable medical equipment, as I spoke earlier. So we could issue that hearing aid from the local VA medical center. Thank you. <clears throat> um, so also related to that, does the tribal health program submit a claim for services done by their own specialist? And who covers the cost of the hearing aids? Although I think, Cindy, you may have just addressed that one. Yeah, the, um, the hearing tests themselves could be done at the IHS or the Tribal Health Program and we would reimburse for that. And then the hearing aid themselves would be distributed from the local VA Medical Center. Thank you. Our next question that we received, what if a veteran needed a transplant? How would that be coordinated? I'll take that one. Thank you, Dr. Carroll. Sure. Um, in our system, we do not do transplant surgery or even evaluations for transplant. So we would, of course, if the um, if our patient was uh, a registered veteran and met the qualifications, we would refer them to the VA and we'd look over at Cindy. <laughs> at, that's right. They need to be seen at the local uh, VA medical center and possibly referred to one of our transplant specialty sites. And we do, for people that aren't aware, the VA does have a network of centers of excellence for various types of transplants and would coordinate that service within our system. Um, the next question, will the VA reimburse the Tribal Health Program for transportation services for the veteran? I'll take that question. Uh, Certain veterans are eligible for payment of beneficiary travel uh, for transportation services in the VA. As part of the agreement process, those veterans that are eligible for that transportation benefit must apply for that benefit directly to the VA. The Tribal Health or Indian Health programs uh, will not 
collect that payment on behalf of the veteran. So those eligible veterans should contact their local VA and apply for that beneficiary travel benefit after their appointment. Um, the next question, we actually had quite a few that were received in advance. Many veterans have tried to enroll in the VA health care, but were not eligible because of their income. Who makes the decision on increasing the income guidelines or doing away with them altogether? Um, as I mentioned earlier in the broadcast, there are some veterans that are only eligible for enrollment based on their income, and those veterans must agree to make co-payments. Uh, for those veterans, that uh, guidelines for income are included in the VA statute. So we have a statutory provision that we have to look at income for certain non-service connected veterans in order to enroll them in VA health care. Um, in order to change that, we would require legislative change to our authority uh, to change those income guidelines. Um, the next question, does the VA reimburse if the tribal health program has a contract health service to support direct care, such as a contract physician practicing under the authority of the tribal health program? Dr. Carroll, can you take that one? Sure. We did discuss this a little bit ahead of broadcasts. But basically, yes, um, the individual, we would make sure that they are covered by either the IHS or the VA. And then with that, if the contracting care provider was at the tribal health facility, um, we would consider that direct care. And that would then be charged over to the VA and should be covered. Thank you, Dr. Carroll. And then the last question. If a veteran is found not to be eligible because he is over the income threshold, can the tribal health program still make a claim to VA if they provide it direct care services and can prove the patient is an AI veteran? Cindy, do you want to answer that or do you want me to take it? Sure. Um, I think the answer is, uh, the short answer is no. Um, in order to receive reimbursement uh, for the veteran's care that's received, they, uh, the veteran needs to be enrolled and eligible for the medical benefits package. And in this case, um, they would not meet that criteria. Thank you. Um, next, we'll move on to a few other questions. As a tribal health, uh, as a tribal health program, <clears throat> who at VA do I contact with questions after I have a reimbursement agreement in place? And is it different for an Indian Health site? Cindy, can you answer that one? I can try. Um, it's not different for an Indian Health site. Um, once the um, agreement is signed, if uh, the question is regarding payments, it would be sent to our Vision 20 Claims Processing Center. If the question is regarding the agreement itself and or services that are provided, it would go to the local VA Medical Center. Thank you. Uh, our next question, why don't these agreements include all veterans, not just Native veterans? For example, if a tribal member's spouse is a veteran, are they also covered? Carl, could you answer that question? Okay, I'll, I'll try. Uh, whenever it comes to eligibility, that is uh, fairly complex. And uh, I think uh, in situations like this, it's probably best actually to go to the local level, to go to the local uh, tribal health program and the, the tribe and, uh, and the VA at the local level to address these kinds of specific questions. However, whenever you look at the, uh, the national agreement, uh, you are required to be uh, eligible for IHS services and also required to be eligible for VA services, but not just eligible for the VA, you have to enroll in the VA services. And we really stress that because it's very important because you can be a veteran eligible for the VA, but not enrolled. And if you're not enrolled, we can't bill and collect for the services. But uh, that was more specific questions, I think when it involves the tribal programs, it should uh, refer locally for that. Great, thank you. Yes, we w really want to encourage all eligible veterans to enroll in VA healthcare because it benefits them as well as Indian yes. Health and Tribal Health programs. Um, here's another. Can you explain what the VA Medical Center's role is in the Tribal Health Programs agreements at every stage of the process? Cindy, could you answer that one? Sure. Well, the VA Medical Center is involved from day one. Once we receive a letter of intent um, that there's interest in establishing the agreement, we reach out to the VA Medical Center and begin to facilitate um, the process to work through the agreement. So they're involved in setting up the agreement, the signing of the agreement, and then, of course, um, in the execution of the agreement. Thank you. What is a local implementation plan? 
Is this also referred to as the site readiness criteria? Cindy, can you sure. answer that one? <laughs> sure. A local implementation plan was really established. Um, Indian Health Service had one main agreement, and so in order to uh, get the specifics about each one of the locations, there was a local implementation plan that was created, and it included some of the specifics about um, that facility. The site readiness checklist um, allows us to establish the criteria that's needed to start um, sending claims and making reimbursements. Thank you. A viewer asks, what are the differences between Indian Health Service and Tribal Health Programs agreements? Cindy or Dr. Carroll? I'll try. Um, an IHS program agreement is part of the National Reimbursement Agreement and Tribal Health Programs can use that agreement or can work with the VA to organize an ag agreement under their own terms. So we feel that the national agreement can help everyone, but if a tribe wants to work specifically on certain things with the VA, they can set up their own uh, tribal health program agreement. Great. Thank you. Oh, well, that leads right into the next question. Can I negotiate the terms of my tribal health programs agreement, such as changing the language of terms instead of signing the template agreement? Cindy? Sure. Um, so the tri there is a template for the tribal health agreements and that's the starting point and absolutely the content is negotiable. Um, there are certain things that can be changed with minor impacts um, and then others would take further negotiations. Okay. Thank you. Our next question, what VA office administers the reimbursements or claims? Cindy? Sure. The Chief Business Office, Purchase Care, um, actually administers the claim reimbursement. And we have a centralized claims processing unit up in Vision 20 um, that processes the claims. Thank you. Um, our next question, kind of similar to one of the ones we received in advance, are veterans entitled to beneficiary travel when they are seen at the tribal health programs? Uh, if a veteran is eligible for veteran or beneficiary travel uh, from receiving care at the VA, then yes, they are eligible to receive that beneficiary travel when they go to an Indian Health or Tribal Health Program for care reimbursed by the VA. As I mentioned earlier, those veterans should contact the local VA medical center to get that reimbursement for beneficiary travel after their care. Our next question, why should an AIAN veteran go to the VA when I can get my care at an IHS or my tribal health program. Dr. Carroll? Sure. Well, we at the Indian Health Service feel you should come to the Indian Health Service to get your care. We also know that many of our sites are located in rural areas where many of our American Indian and Alaska Native veterans live. However, there are services that we don't always provide that the VA will provide for us, and so we would send you to the VA to have those services done. Um, and if you're living in an area where you're close to a VA, then you do have the choice between the VA or the Indian Health Service for the different issues that come up for health care. Thank you. Here's another email. Can tribal health programs or Indian Health Service bill for contract health services recently changed to purchased or referred care or PRC? Carl, can you answer that one? Okay, I'll try. The current agreement focuses uh, specifically on direct care and it does not uh, address uh, purchase or referred care. Uh, that is an area that the Indian Health Service and the VA will be working on here in the future to, uh, to give more guidance on that. Uh, right now, we do not uh, bill the VA for purchase or referred care. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, our next question. A viewer would like to know, I want to contact my local VA. Where do I start? As we mentioned earlier in the program, uh, the viewer could start by contacting the VA by phone at the number Cindy mentioned earlier, uh, which is also on the screen. Through that number, they could get information about a local facility where they could go in person. And if a veteran chooses to go in person to a, a local VA medical center, they should look for the enrollment or eligibility office to assist them in applying for enrollment to gain access to health care. They can also apply online. Right. Yes, that's right. Thank you, Cindy. Yeah. They can apply online and fill out the 1010-EZ. Um, our next question, an emailer asks, I want to host a veterans enrollment event at my IHS or Tribal Health Care Program facility. Where do I start? Carl or Dr. Carroll? 
I think uh, the best place to start would be to check with the uh, chief operating officer. As a matter of fact, uh, the leadership at the facility, at the local facility. And all of our facilities have uh, primarily business offices. They have staff who are well trained on enrolling people, on educating you know, their own staff as well as the public. And they go out and they do different activities to enroll people. So I think if you would check with the uh, leadership, the CEO at the local level, and they would involve some of the business office staff that they, they would actually work closely with, uh, with uh, the request and, and certainly could, uh, could uh, initiate some activities I think would be valuable. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, mm -hmm. the next question. Why are there co-pays after the initial 30-day pharmacy supply when the tribal health program does not charge a co-pay for pharmaceuticals? Um, I'll take that one. As we mentioned earlier, the tribal health or Indian health service programs have two options uh, for providing for pharmaceuticals. They can provide the initial 30-day supply locally, and for longer-term medications, they can send them to the VA Consolidated Mail Order Pharmacy Program. In either case, whenever that Indian health or tribal health facility provides the medication and it's filled by the VA or paid for by the VA, there is no copayment for the veteran. Uh, only when a veteran takes a prescription or receive a prescription from the VA Medical Center and has it filled at the VA Medical Center would they pay a copay if they were required to pay copays at the VA. But for any prescription that is ordered by tribal health or Indian health programs and filled either initial 30-day supply at their location or through our VA CMOP Consolidate Mail-Out Pharmacy, there is no copayment. So, <clears throat> and now our last question. If a tribal health program provider requires that the native veteran receives ancillary services, such as x-ray or lab, is that included in the reimbursement, either at that site or if they referred off-site? Cindy, would you like to take that one? Sure. Um, as we previously mentioned, the reimbursement agreement at this time only covers um, items that are provided on-site. So if the um, lab test was referred off-site, it would not be covered. If it was referred on-site, it is part of the reimbursement agreement and could be billed for. Great, thank you. Um, we did just get one question in via email. Uh, do veterans have to designate a primary care provider? Um, and the question didn't say at Indian Health or the VA, so why don't we have both of us answer it? Sure. Um, this could be a long answer. Um, for the Indian Health Service, uh, we have our improving patient care program that's in place as part of our third priority um, to improve the quality of and access to care. It, with that program, as that um, comes across the country at our different sites, we will be implementing um, having either primary care teams or primary care provider that the patient would be seeing over and over again. So we're trying to put that in place and working toward just that, having the same individual being uh, your primary care doc. Thank you. Cindy, did you want to answer for VA? Sure. Um, we do have the primary care teams um, established at the local VA medical centers, and so every veteran is assigned a primary care team if they're receiving their primary care from the VA. Thank you. And another question that just came in as well, is substance abuse included in the agreement, substance abuse treatment included in the agreement, reimbursement agreement? Cindy? Um, I'm going to defer back to you, Chris, okay. and I believe that's part it of is. the medical benefits package, but I would like you to confirm that. It is. <laughs> um, substance abuse, actually we call it substance use treatment in our world, is included in the medical benefits package and so therefore would be included in the reimbursement agreement if the Indian Health or Tribal Health Programs provided those services as direct care. Right. So, well, I'm afraid we're all out of time for today. We hope you enjoyed our second program in this series. If you have more questions, please contact the appropriate staff at the numbers you see on your screen. I would like to thank today's presenters, Cindy Kindred, Dr. Susan Carroll, and Carl Harper for their presentations and Indian Health Services collaboration and partnership to provide valuable information to our nation's veterans. Remember to send in ideas for future segments to our email. And until our next webcast, Thanks for watching and thanks for joining us today.